countdown in just a second. starting okay cool I just started now so yeah again this is the glitchless version of Undertale's true pacifist ending it's off about the same as any other normal run we have flowey here who he wants to talk to us let's see if he's actually as nice as he makes out to be okay no nice we don't want to be friends with him so, while I've got a bit of time, um, I'll explain the mashing mechanic for this run, which is basically 90%. So, I'll be mashing primarily between four keys, which is the Z, X, Enter, and Right Shift keys. Between closing the text box and mashing the text to advance it. So, X, um, X and Shift close the... no, X and Shift um, mash the text away, and Z and Enter close the text boxes. And we try to do that as fast as we progress through the text as fast as we can and make our way through all the dialogue. So we're in Ruins at the moment, and Ruins is basically the tutorial level for the first part. Spare this, we flee this frog it because otherwise if we kill it, that basically cancels the true pacifist run right there. And if we don't flee it, then Toriel scares it away in that five seconds. <coughs> so, coming up in this room here, we just go through a really long... ...the first half of the ruins done. I'm gonna try a little swag walk here. Okay, there we go. So, swag. <laughs> Um, so there's going to be a lot of this sort of downtime throughout the run, so obviously where I can, I'll let the host know if there's any donations that can be read out at that point. Okay, don't know why I stopped there. So we're going to do a bit of for an item. So we threaten the frog it. Threatening doesn't count towards not being true pacifist. Kill any enemies that aborts the run, right there. So we need to get seven gold for an item. Read the sign twice there. Uh, we need to get 7 gold for a spider donut coming up, which is very important in one of the boss fights that we have to get through. Uh, explain that when it comes up. Because since we're doing True Passwords glitchless, we can't skip certain bosses. And obviously one of the said bosses coming up. Good, we've got good RNG here, so we got all one turn encounters. And we got our seven gold. So this is Naps the Bloke, and he's a sad little ghost, so we have to try and cheer him up, otherwise we don't get past him. So we want to cheer him up three times, and then on the fourth turn we can either cheer or flirt. So I'm going to be very careful on slow with the menuing just to be safe because it's happened to everyone that's run this we accidentally threaten hey i'm sorry to interrupt there's threaten, actually a lot of um technical issues uh coming from your stream right now there's a lot of frame drops and a bit of like um corruption on the video hey i'm uh, sorry to interrupt know what's there's causing actually that. a lot of um technical issues uh coming out from your stream right now there's a lot of frame drops on the video uh Did you have to know what's causing that I don't know, it could be... No, just get to a, a place that you can, you know, uh, wait, and then maybe lower the bitrate or something. Stop the run for a little bit. Thank you.
Yep. Thank you. Okay. Rotate it differently? I don't know. Thank you. Exiting ruins. There's an area we can change the bitrate up and try and fix this up a little bit. Two reasons. Uh, first reason is Asgore, second reason is Azrael. I'll get into that later on. So, we talk tutorial and we basically get through that little So this is the last little bit of RNG for now with the tutorial fight because we want to try and get as many of one circle through to the end of this fight and on the second to last attack before she stops hurting us. Or we just get the hand, that's cool. So at that point their toil can't hurt us anymore, so that's why we get to 2 HP. And the hands basically cancel the attack animation straight away if you hit them. So we try and get as many hands as we can, but that's all RNG based. So we just have dialogue here, because Toriel, of course, feeling guilty about trying to keep us down here, and... So we get hugged, and this is about where we finish Ruins. So there's a corridor here, and then there's flowery dialogue, <coughs> then after that we transition into Snowden, so around there I'll try and fix up the bitrate. Um, yeah, I think it's just having, having some frame drops. A little bit? Just double checking. Yeah, yep, I think you. it's just I'll having drop it, some frame drops. I'll drop it down to a thousand and see if that does it. Thank So that should fix it, hopefully. If it doesn't, um, I don't know, maybe it's my internet or something. I'm not really too sure, and I do apologize. Oh, no, I did get the ribbon. I did. Okay. thing with this run in particular that you have to be very careful with is item management because you're picking up a whole lot of items on this run that you need to As once was said in the AGDQ run by, I believe it was JD Linkmaster, um, it in the Butterscotch As one of the examples so anyway, we have Sans, and he greets us with a bobby cushion hand thingy. And welcome to Mashing Part 2. Also, yeah. 
sorry about the loud keyboard noises, that comes part of the course. So we're going to heal up here and then we're going to do items. So we want to equip the tough glove here because we use the stick on some of the dog encounters in this area. <coughs> the reason for that is it's actually faster since you automatically. Uh, okay. Fun fact: my mashing is hot garbage and shouldn't be. So that was Doggo, and that's reason number one why we use the stick there, because you instantly get a one-turn spare. And I'm and more puzzles. <coughs> so yeah, basically all this area is just a few more puzzles and. Obviously, more character development. Unfortunately, we do not have any donations right now, but you can find the donation link um, at uh, totify.com. Unfortunately, we do not have any uh, donations right chat now, now, but you can find them. So, if you feel inclined to donate towards the Trevor Project, which is a fantastic cause, at uh, uh, totify.com, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yep, no worries. I don't know why, but for some reason, lesser dog you can flee, but everyone else you have to spare. Papyrus puzzles and shenanigans. That was bad, but it, it, it worked. TLDR, switch in the tree, you get the puzzle solved straight away. Say no twice because it's faster, because we don't have to deal with the warm-up of the puzzle machine, and we just have Papyrus walking away slightly disappointed. <coughs> Normally in any percent you would do that completely differently and you'd land on a subpixel that allowed you to glide across the gap without actually um, But because of glitchless, um, obviously we can't do that, so we have to do it normally. We've got Greater Dog now, the last dog boss in this area. Also, how does that armor fit under that snow path? We don't heal before any part of this area, and if we get that dog skip that we just got there, that does 3 HP damage, and if we didn't heal... So coming up, best part... Look at that dog just chilling on the top right. Just hang... Yeah. 
Manly bandana. So, fun fact, we use this loot to literally circumvent the better part of this town area. And we're coming out to the Papyrus fight, and this is a fun um, Unfortunately, you're still having a lot of the same issues as yeah, before. Die. Um, With the Papyrus fight, we quote unquote so, die. I don't know, maybe if you get a chance to lower the resolution or something, that would be nice. Unfortunately, you're still having a lot of the same issues as before. Um, yeah, So I, I honestly don't, I don't know, know what's maybe, going on. Um, I figure it's just something on resolution. one of our ends. Uh, there's a ton of corruption uh, and stuff still, unfortunately. When you say resolution, like an OBS? Yeah. I, I honestly don't know what's going on. Um, I figure it's just something on one of our ends. There's a ton of corruption and stuff still, unfortunately. I can try. I'd have to... Um... Uh, I'm more meant like the output resolution on OBS itself. I can try, like... Uh, I'm not like the output resolution on OBS itself. Ah, uh, okay, I have to try and remember where I am. Let's try and remember where that actually is. Right. Pick, because otherwise we'll get the blue attack first, and that takes a long time to come up. So that's why we just do it normally. And Attack by default. Okay, so I'll yeah I'll get through this. Uh, there's a little. actually want to not fight him because by not fighting him it means oh actually I just realized we have the papyrus date first then we leave to go to waterfall so it'll be after the date that we look at the rest I'm gonna mash a bit slower here just to be safe so I don't accidentally fight him again It's more of a hangout than a date, but apparently... We're right here for it. And then after we've finished the neutral branch, we go back into the game and we date Undyne and Papyrus. So we did spaghetti skip there. So we get offered to eat. We know and love.
So that's the Papyrus date done, now we move on to Waterfall in a little bit. Walking and some more walking. There's sands again as well as monsters. We get the tutu because it's another important item for coming up. Okay. Yeah, is it saying that there's any frame drops on your end? Because I might have to go to a save point, which I think there's one not too far ahead. I'll have to do a save point, cut the um, stream real quick, and then restart it strange. to change the output. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try rebooting the uh, yeah. is it saying stream that there's any frame on my drop? end as well, one, one last time. I have settled down on my end for now, so I don't know. Um, so give me one second. I mean, uh, I'm going to try rebooting the... Okay, so something I can talk about a little bit now, we're at Spares 1, the first Spares cutscene chase. Um, so as you can see we're getting Spares thrown at us and our objective is to not get hit. And obviously we do that by walking around and trying to manipulate where the Spares are going to go. It looks like everything's working now. Sorry for the large inconvenience. Yep, no, that's fine. That's fine. Better to be safe than sorry. Also, yeah, as you may have noticed, the hitbox is kind of broken, so... This game is incredibly well programmed, even without the punch card. Um, the hitbox actually is not from the top of Frisk's head to the bottom of their shoes. The hitbox is actually from... about where their eyes are on their head to about the same height below their feet. So that's probably why I got hit there where I shouldn't have, because the hitboxes are broken, and Toby Fox, please fix, thanks. So coming up was the room where we would normally grab the punch card, but since we're doing glitchless, and since we don't actually have the... Oh, we would actually have the money for it still, but we don't get it because, yeah. Some nice tranquil music here. Oh, tranquil, or depending on how you look at the background. Sorry, I forgot there was a phone call here that I had to take. Okay, and coming up, we have one of the NPCs that we'd love to skip, but we can't. It's Onion San, or Onion San, however you want to pronounce it. I guess San, because it's still kind of a Japanese thing. Also, that, those facial expressions are probably some of the best sprites in the game. He's so happy! Look at him! And we flee Shiren. So you'll notice that I'm just fleeing everything, because again, that's what we're meant to do. We don't fight, we don't do any weird mechanics like trying to sing along with them or something like that. We just... nope. 
Just nope out of there. having to walk with Monster Kid because reasons. Also, fun fact, if you hold up, left, uh, up, down and right here, you actually get a speed boost across the screen. Which means we can ditch Monster Kid for a little bit and have some peace and quiet. I mean, what? Also, another recurring gag in Waterfall is Monster Kid falling on his face because he has no arms. Yet apparently he wants us to step on his shoulders. I don't know how that works, but apparently it works. So coming up now, we've got Spears 2, and this is another this is another uh, cutscene chase that we can manipulate the predict the predicted path for the spears. So I'll hold down two arrow keys at a time, and that will usually make the spears come up in a certain pattern, which makes it easier for me to avoid. A lot of them are coming up out of my way. Uh, that's unfortunate. I'm going to run right into that one and I thought I cleared it. Uh, yeah, That's the first half of Waterfall done. Now we have a nice little cutscene here. And you actually get a little bit of a spoiler here. Because you can actually tell later on, based on whose voice, whatever you want to call them, sounds like that tone. And later on we find out who it is. I'm not going to say who, because spoilers. Okay, let's see if I can get this trick here. Hey, we're walking on water, boys. So this doesn't actually count as a glitch, because it's a visual trick rather than a glitch. It doesn't... I'm going to heal, but I'm not going to save, because mad dummy. And I took damage at Spears 1. So yeah, we call that one Walking on Water, um, simply because, like I said, it's a visual trick, saves us no time, other than psychologically. And yeah, this run is now blessed. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Because we don't have any healing items here, so I actually have to be careful. And we've got 5 cycle, which is good, which is the optimal cycle we can get. And we still have 14 HP, so not bad. Because again, we don't have any healing items we can actually use because of the pie we need for later. So now we switch from cotton balls to rockets. Fun times. Whoop, 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 whoop. Next part is kind of difficult, so I'm just going to concentrate a bit here. How I didn't get hit is a mystery to me. And 
and that's Mad Dummy. Kind of an easy fight once you know how to do the 5 cycle for the first half. Oh, almost got hit by the knife there, that would have been unfortunate. Um, yeah, kind of an easy fight once you know how to do the 5 cycle mechanic, and the second half is just about dodging and not dying, really. Um, you'll notice I did heal before the fight, because sometimes you can actually take a bit more damage. And with the Undyne fight coming up, we're going to heal again anyways. Um, simply because... Yeah. <sighs> so we've got an Absolute coming in to save us again. Let me heal! Let me heal! So we've got the Cloudy Glasses, which is the next item on our to grab list, and that only leaves us with one more item. And again, coming up in Hotland, we'll do a little bit of item management once we get the items we need. Because you'll notice we have eight spots in our inventory, and picking up the first item that we need, we will have no room. So we're going to come up to a very special encounter here. Hoi! is Tam. So normally in any percent there's a few skips you can do between this area and the Undyne fight itself. Unfortunately since we're not doing any percent we can't show that off. So here's the full dialogue. <laughs> Seven human souls, apparently that's a thing. Uh, if there's any donations, now's a good time to read them. Unfortunately, there are not any donations currently. Unfortunately, there are not any donations currently, and uh, you could donate. Uh, like we had said before, you can donate on um, the Totify that you can find in the chat, right here. Uh, all money donated goes directly to Trevor Project, it's a fantastic cause, it helps our to use everywhere. And we would appreciate your donations very much. Yep, good cause. So we've got a save monster kit here because it's faster. Uh, yeah. Also, how does he hang on there? Does he hang on with, like, his mouth? Oh! Actually, I goofed. It's actually faster to leave him hanging. Okay, well... Oh, hey, you got to see me save Monster Kid today. Even more true pacifist work. Oh, well. That happens. I'm just used to skipping Monster Kid bridge cutscene, you know? It just... yeah. So coming up we have the Undyne fight, and we're going to walk into the first trigger here. And obviously that starts the sequence that we need to get through. And after we've done this cutscene we go down and save, because we need to do... We need to save just in case. Single mesh here, it's easier. And here's Undyne. So we challenge here because it makes the attacks come up faster, which again saves us a little bit of time. So 
we challenge four times to get the maximum attack speed that we need. And of course we fight Undyne three times total. Each time she progressively gets more annoyed. Obviously we still keep challenging. Time, we're going to stop in a very specific area. We're going to stop right here. And that means we're going to need to fight three times, not four. Three. I haven't really done this in a while, so... Keep checking! No. So we stop where we stopped before because we get a phone call from a pirate and that actually still means Undyne isn't moving. But it also means we don't lose any progress on the chase. So coming up we have to Undyne water here, otherwise we get fried fish sticks and no true passive standing. So we save Undyne and somehow she becomes our friend. Although in all fairness, who wears a suit of armor in a hot land lava volcano environment? Seriously, who does that? That just seems like the most counterproductive use for a suit of armor. Like, ever. Also, I should have taken a bit more damage here, because we do have the lab skip coming up. We need to be at 1 HP, but I was playing it a bit safer since I haven't done... Also, hello, Alfies. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yes! It's Kool-Aid Man, aka Medita! Apparently, something about Mew Mew Kissy Cutie and friendship and whatnot. <laughs> and of course, we just completely call Elfies out. Feels Elfies, man. So, another thing with Holland is we go back to the puzzle... Puzzles.
Also, apparently Elvis can fix a phone in like two seconds flat. Well, three seconds, I don't know. And now we just get bombarded with notifications every five seconds from Alfie's. Yay. So we flee Vulk in there. Again, this is the Passos run, so we don't kill anything. Normally, in neutral, any percent, we would kill the Vulcan there. But we have the Pi to substitute for that for Asgore. And a heal there. So we've got 1 HP now, and I don't want to risk it. So we're going to go get the Burnt Pan, which is the final weapon we're going to acquire in the game. And we get rid of the Tough Glove. Again, you'll notice when I mentioned before about item management, that's the reason why we want to do that there, because we have no room for the last Glamour item, if you want to call it that. And coming up we have the first east-west puzzles. So sorry for the random people. Da -da -da -da. Now we go west. Now we get to move on to the next area. And coming up in just a little bit, we everyone's favorite robotic host. It's... Oh, it's a bit early there. It's cooking with a killer robot. And apparently we need a human soul. But, wait. Also, apparently vegan souls are a thing in this game. For the jetpack mini game.
going through Hotland. I'm going to save here because we have to fight the Royal Guards and that can be tricky since I haven't done it in a good while, but it should be straightforward. Oh, no, I got it around the wrong way. It was clean to whisper one. Attacks get a little bit wonky here because RG01 is flustered at RG02, apparently. <coughs> and now we have the epic bromance of the game. course now we have the uh, fake out from one but it's obvious that you know it's genuine so that's the Royal Guards done and we're coming up to the news show which is another Metaton cutscene that we normally would skip Even the dog, even my words, oh my. So, fun fact, with the present and the basketball, we can actually hit them with the pan, but the others we have to defuse normally. I don't know why. And, new show done. So yeah, now we're done that, we've got all the items we need to, we just go through normally now, nothing really special has to happen, it's just we go through the run and do the things. All the while having alphas call us every 5 seconds just to make sure we're okay. Go to level 3. Hello again, Muffet. Oh wait, no, this is the first time we see Muffet. Now we're at North-South. And we have to do these two puzzles. Now with this one, these two you only get one shot instead of two. So the puzzles are a little bit more finicky, but also muscle memory comes into play as well if you've done them enough times.
Easy. Easy breezy puzzle done thingy. You stop to smell the flowers. So in the room coming up, we're not actually going to save just yet, we're going to save after the boss fight coming up, because we actually do a save and reload coming up. So, hello again Muffet, we meet at last. And that is Muffet spared, and now we're going to go back and save, because, again, there's a save and quit coming up that we need to do, um, and, yeah, we want to do it after we fought Muffet, not before, otherwise if we do it before, we have to fight Muffet again, and it just wastes time. So there's the save and reload that we're going to do because we now get to skip the opera puzzle. I'm just hoping that it was after the very first box that comes up. We'll find out. There we go. That's the opera puzzle skip. Well, that's the opera skip. Now we do the opera puzzle. And literally perfect. defeated me, how can this be? You were stronger, whatever. Also, because we did another Metaton cutscene, we don't have to go up here and then back down to right floor 3 floor 1. but it doesn't work, so we skip that. So we fight magic that way, because, fun fact, magic we can't actually flee from manually, we have to actually make a spare condition happen. Laser bridge. Now we've got one more puzzle to do coming up. E. 
easy. Puzzles in this game are so easy, Kappa. But no, seriously, with a lot of practice and retention, it's pretty straightforward to remember them. Or you can just do what I do and just literally practice them the morning of the run. I'm gonna save before here just in case. So now we're at Metaton proper. And of course we've got we've got to get Metaton to turn around so we can flip his switch. And that will take us to the second half of this fight. Also I just popped chat up because I don't actually have it open at the time, but thanks for the good luck. Um, so far so good, nothing really major's happened. Now this is the part where the items that we got before come into play. So there's one thing we do here which we call SA skip. Because normally in this fight, if you get to a certain rating, you can progress the fight. But obviously, we want to try and get it done as fast as we can. And we got it. We got SA skip. Barely, but we got it. So now we get all this wonderful dialogue that we can't skip. So if there's any donations, now would be a good time to read them, since there's nothing really here that I can discuss. Unfortunately, as of right now, there are still no new donations, but I will post the link in chat once again. Okay. We do have a fair few number of incentives and um, goals, I, for lack of a better word. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but yeah, I guess if you want to... Um, yeah. Yeah, if it's okay, I can talk about those. Yeah, yeah, sure. Alright, so currently we have four bid wars and five ones to get met. Now, or five incentives to get met, rather. Currently, we have a bid war for Sekiro, which is save or kill Kuro. Uh, Transformers, the game has a bid war, which is uh, the category, which is either Autobots or Decepticons. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, uh, game bid war, either they'll be playing on Diamond or playing on Pearl. And Jazz Jackrabbit 2 bid war, which you'll be bidding for the character, which will either be Lori or Jazz. Um, as well as a few incentives to meet. Currently, we have five out of thirty-five dollars for the Mighty Gumbolt Burst Hard Mode incentive, where instead of playing on normal difficulty, they'll be playing on a hard mode instead. That changes the run a bit. Um, and we have um, a donation incentive for the Perfect Run, which is a Super Mario Galaxy Two thing. Um, super, super cool. Uh, really, really hard level. And it's really cool to see that speed round. And then. We have a really interesting donation incentive with Wii Sports Resort where um, they have to collect 10 ducks and also they have to play the saxophone during the wakeboarding section of the game. Don't ask me how that works. It's it's quite magical. Just let them play the saxophone, please. Yes, please do. I'm sure that would be very entertaining and very exciting to watch. Um, mm -hmm. Also, sorry if my keyboard kind of cut in there a little bit. I didn't actually realize how that bit went, but 
yeah, like I said, you know, there's a fair few incentives and bid wars coming up, so if you want to see that sort of stuff happen, then obviously, you know, the link's been posted in chat, otherwise, yeah. So, we've finished core, and we're off to new home now, so, basically, second ruins, if you will, because this is basically Asgore's home instead of Toriel's. Um, and, I guess coming up, in a little bit, there's Monster Tail, which... Actually, it would have been a better time to go over the bid wars and all that, so I apologize for that. That's alright, we still have two more to talk about. Yep, if you want to go over those now. Alrighty. The last two we actually have is a Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland uh, incentive, where instead of doing any percent, they would do 100%. And we have Kirby's Air Ride. Um, incentive called five hot dogs percent where they will collect five hot dogs cool that, 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 yeah that's the category i mean they just go into city escape to collect five hot dogs it's it's quite magical and it's an experience you really want to have um had in your life these once oh definitely sounds like a good time for sure so basically i'll give the abridged version of this whole cutscene area here uh, basically, it's just all the monsters in the underworld explaining the story of the first human and Azrael and how everything went the way it did now. So we've got the two keys, now we can unlock the gate and go down into Asgore's basement. That totally didn't sound sketch at all, but it is what it is. It's actually the same as Victoria's house. So, yeah, I guess... Resident Sleeper, maybe? I don't know, it's, it's kind of a meme at this point to just spam Resident Sleeper through Monster Tail because it's literally just lore. It's just exposition and unfortunately we can't mash past it. So, we have this now, which... Hopefully is being somewhat insightful and in covering certain aspects of the game and preluding the game. Although I will say the one good thing about this part is the soundtrack is really good for this. The music that's playing right now. Which actually, coincidentally enough, is the game, Undertale. Also, there's another little save and quit coming up, which, yeah. We do that, and then we go and fight the final, well, the second to last, I should say, boss for this particular branch. Because I should say how this actual run works is we have to complete the neutral ending first, and that means we basically go and fight Asgore and Flowey as normal, but then we re from the pre or save point, and apparently because how the game works is because we saved before Asgore, quote unquote, it doesn't actually register the fact that we quote Hence why we can still do the true passive standing after the fact. We just have to save at a certain spot so it doesn't actually well I mean we save before the fight regardless because So it doesn't really matter as much. So I'd say we're about two-thirds of the way done with Monster Tail. There's probably about maybe five or six more. Oh, so yeah, thanks for the good luck in chat as well. Overall, I'd say this run hasn't gone too badly, apart from a couple of minor tech issues that we've got fixed, and also a couple of actual run issues on my end, where I've forgotten or stuff. Um, such as the Monster Kid Bridge cutscene, but it is what it is. So we save there, because we're going to do a save and quit coming up. Very specific quit, because it allows us to skip through the Judgment Hall text. So we have to wait for the tone to come up. 
Well, you actually have to wait for the first text box to come up. So, reload, and we go back through the same thing we just did before. How you know you've done it correctly is you'll hear an actual different tone. It'll be pitched. Yep, there we go. Don't ask me how that works, it just works. So, that's Judgment Hall. Now, in, when, in English, in this room we're in now, we actually have a save point coming up which we're going to use. The reason is, we don't want to save right before the Asgore fight, because otherwise it's just extra time we And we don't want to save beforehand, otherwise we have to go through this cutscene again the next time we come through here. So that's why we save in this room. Also, by the way, hi, Goat Dad. You know what to do. Yes, I do, and I don't want to do it, but I have to. So I should, in theory, have the Burnt Pan and the Stained Apron equipped, which is actually the best items in both offense and defense, because Burnt Pan, along with Empty Gun, does the most damage, but we don't actually get the Empty Gun. And Stained Apron actually regens us 1 HP over per every 2 or 3 turns. Okay, now here comes the fun part of the run. How bad am I going to do at Asgore today? Can I do worse than a 14 turn? Can I do worse than a 16 turn or better than a 14 turn? Let's find out. So we eat the pie here because that raises our attack and lowers Asgore's defense. Good start. And you'll notice with the attack pattern, you want to try and get four frame perfect hits to get maximum damage, so... Like that. Here we go. Not like that. Don't be like me and miss literally every quad, except one. Please don't. Okay, that one was even worse. Oh, one frame. You turd. I'm in pain at the moment with these quads, or these non-quads. This is literal pain. So you can tell when it's a 16 turn because that's when the music loops around again. Or it's just started to loop around. Might be a 15 turn, which 
which is about par for me. And the saddest part is, as you finish Asgore off, he actually has a smile on his face. Which is, yeah. And now we hear Flowey coming up because, of course, it's always Flowey. That's kill or be killed. <laughs> Again, our umpteenth, our umpteenth reload in this game because that's a thing. So yeah, welcome to the next eleven minutes of auto scroll. If I had to guess where this runs at at the moment, I'd say it's probably on like a 154, 155 pace. It's going to depend on how the true lab and run goes. So it's not too bad. We're still fairly well under estimate. Yeah, this is flowery, by the way. are an idiot. Let's see, it looks like the stream's kind of everything I care of the stream at the moment, Pina. It's just the same kind of corruption and skips and stuff that have been happening up until this point. It's just... I can't say Oh, rip, no hit Flowey. Oh, we got the laser attack. Nice. They're already undodgeable today. So the good thing here is you actually, in the soul phases, you can't actually die. Remember if it's top right? It was, cool. If it turns, to, if it goes counterclockwise, it's right, if it goes left, cool. I always get that mixed up. But yeah, full health again, let's go. Oh look, another laser attack. Nice. Oh! So this soul phase coming up is soul phase you can actually miss the act button on if you're not careful. 
So you want to be as far to the right and as high up here, and just spamming Z in the enter so you don't miss it. Um, a little bit of a sad trivia effect. I've actually done that before in a TP in a. Well, I don't remember the exact category, but I have done this before where I've missed it. Yes, I have no shame. In it, in it. So you can save a little bit of time if you pick which side, but it's a 50-50 chance. And I was wrong, no, I lost half a second. Crying. So with this last phase here, oh no, sorry, this is number five, not number six. Derp. I'm just gonna take all the damage here because you can't die here. You called for help. Now I get yummy eggs. So after this phase we actually do another reload, so with this phase we just take it down here. Did you really think you could run away? Um, okay, assuming it's permissible by mods, uh, let's get ready for some owl spam in chat. This is Undertale Tradition. So you can actually get quick kill because there's actually still health in the health bar when you attack, but when you actually go to attack it kills them straight away. Not to be confused with normal, which is where obviously
edge of the bullet circle without actually touching it, and we want to be as close to that as we can. You called for help. Body came. Oh boy. And there we go. And there we see Flowey losing all his powers and thus not being able to do anything anymore. Yay! We did it! We beat the boss. No! No! You can't do that! That's the end of the neutral branch. Now we do the trip. Thing is going to be already completed, so we don't have to worry about, you know, anything coming up. That So long elevator. Go back through the Metaton hallway. Gasp, where did Metaton go? So yeah, we have to make our way all the way back down to left floor one, and go back to... The reason why we don't do the Undying Date before we do the Neutral Branch ending, uh, because by the time we actually finish getting past Undying, we're actually nowhere near where we need to be. We're actually nowhere near where we need to be for the actual for the actual date, and also nice not wrong boating to Snowden. That's also happened before, because if you mash too quickly and you don't actually notice the text box coming up in time, you can boat to Snowden, which is something you don't want to do. But yeah, since we're all the way back here now, where it's with Undyne, we're actually at the start of Hotland. We don't really want to do the date just yet because it doesn't actually save us a lot of time. Also, nice fish house. I don't think we've met. So welcome to mashing part three. The mashing. The only drink you can actually pick. And we get a bit more exposition, but we can just mash through it. Apparently I can't whistle today.
Apparently we're doing cooking with Undyne. And we have a mixture of vegetables sprayed on the wall. Gee, it's getting kind of hot on here. Don't you think we should, uh... Oh. And, yeah, we fight here because it doesn't even matter. We only do one damage. Because at this point, it's basically like we don't really want to hurt anyone. Yeah, we have that spare spot in our inventory because we ate, we used the spider donut on Muffet. So now we go back to Hotland. Oh, so we got the dog boat this time. I've always wondered who the mysterious man in the hood is. Exactly who they are. Because apparently no, the letter was from Undyne, but because we gave it to her, then yeah. yeah. Also, fun fact, if you actually get the second dating skip when it comes up dating stop, you actually hear the um, Alpha Slab music in the background. Also, apparently hiding to the right-hand side of objects, while still being in plain sight of people, means you can't be seen in this game. And ready? And anime is real, of course it is. I mean... Uh, we couldn't quite get the double blessed run. I guess while we walk back to True Lab... Yes, actually. Um, there is currently a $5... Thank you very, very much. Um, wrong category, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we've already had the bad time. Kind of right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this bit, uh, this donation did actually go towards a bit war. Um, or Pokemon Diamond and Pearl did bit war on Diamond. Nice. So, currently, Diamond is in the lead by $5, so if you want to see Pearl instead, get your donations in. Well, 
so another kind of long elevator here. But... And so I think there's, now we're going into a part of a run that I haven't really done in a long time, because even for any percent I haven't really done runs. And True Lab is basically the quote-unquote point of no return for it being a true pacifist run. Since none of the encounters that you get in here... You Congratulations, we did the true pacifist ending. Now we just need to finish the run. So, hopefully this all goes to plan and I don't unfortunately die to lemon bread this time. Now we have his memory head, and this is kind of straightforward. As is with all the encounters here, you just have to know the menuing. So... As we're about to find out. Oh, re refuse rather, not reject. Same thing, means the same thing. So, we have to do four encounters to get four keys to unlock the main element. Or at least something like that. We'll, we'll, well, we'll find out together. Gonna save here just in case. Because at this point I haven't had to worry about dying, but with lemon bread it's a very real chance if you forget the menu. Attacks. And we have a dog in here. Easiest. We need to turn that fan off because in the room to our left, after lemon bread, is all fogged up and... Also, that's a really uh, threatening looking tentacle popping up. Okay, it wasn't actually a tentacle. A safe point you ask? Nope. Psych. It's actually lemon bread. And we did the right thing. So yeah, this room here, if we didn't do the switch in the previous encounter room with Endogony, we'd actually have to go back and do it, because we couldn't see where we're going. Also, did someone say speed boost? And then I'm going to do another safety save here just in case before we get the last key put in. Because the last key we have to get past Reaper. So we're about 20 minutes away from finishing the run. Um, so yeah, I guess thanks for having me and hopefully you guys enjoyed the run so far and probably pick on Mr. For a second there. Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the run and hopefully you enjoy all the runs coming up after this. day today and all that stuff I guess.
And that's the Reaper bird done. Yeah, we put the last key in. Now we go back the way we came and back into the first room. Next room we go into with the four keys and all that, but we don't actually have access to the elevator just yet. We need to go through here to the gym. I'm on the desktop at the moment, so I I don't know if it's just the desktop itself or if there's just something else going on. Um, yeah, I managed. Top, uh, not the laptop, the desktop for the run. So, I mean, it might still be issues on my end, but I don't really know. Um, um, hopefully, it has. Right. Hopefully, it hasn't impacted the general experience too much, and you guys are still enjoying this. You guys are still enjoying yourselves and enjoying the run. Well, I can say that I've been enjoying it so far, at least. That's good, and hopefully you guys in chat as well. Um, trying my best. So, again, we go back up through Judgment Hall, and because we've already done this in the neutral branch, we don't have to worry about anything. Walk through Asgore's throne again. And now I know what you're thinking, but hang on, do you have to really fight Asgore again? Normal conditions, we would. But as we're about to find out, this run is anything but normal. Asgore just got yeeted off the game. Oh hey, it's Toriel. Also, welcome to Mashing Part 4. The Return of the Mash. Let's be honest, who wanted to see Alphys and Undyne kiss? Let's be real here. Also, kind of ironic and also fitting for the theme of the marathon and the charity we're raising funds for. Um, since both characters in question are actually female. And saved. And everyone's happy, and everyone's all together, and we're all friends. Except Flowey, because apparently Flowey is that one guy. Also, apparently all of your souls are belong to me now.
And this is the final boss fight we have. I guess it's not boss because we're about to find out who it is. Also menacing hand gestures there and what well, looks like an attempt at an evil laugh. Finally, I am tired of being a flower. Oh my goodness. Howdy. Hey, are you there? It's me, your best friend. Oh, hello. Okay, I'm actually going to do something here. Roll at first, which we can just easily dodge. Let's see if we can get Rainbow Azrael here. Let's make this even more, uh... Yes! We got the Rainbow Azrael! Let's go! It's a sign! So we want to try and keep our HP maxed out because we go from one part of this. That's why I, at the moment I'm sparing, but if I need to, I'll go back to act and I'll either dream or hope. This attack pattern right here is the bane of my existence, since it's kind of just all over the place. Also, yes, this is the power of friendship. part right here, including the upcoming attack after this, we will still have 20 HP. Okay, ow. I'm just gonna do a dream here instead of trying to go to my inventory. Now, I've got a Let's go. Perfect round. No deaths. If I can make it through phase two without dying, this will actually be a perfect Ezreal fight. Oh, what? I got hit right there. Okay. If I 
can make it through this turn here, it doesn't matter. Also, nice pun, Toby, but it refused. So, with this, we've got to do specific menuing to optimize these encounters. That's not true. My friends like me, and I like you, too. I think if I remember correctly, it's Papyrus 2, Sans 1, and Sans is Judgment. This is the second time where the pie comes in handy. So that actually saves us two turns on the Toriel Asgore phase. And of course we hug the goat. Part 1. Also I'll ask ahead of time, but who in chat wants me to hug the goat part 2? AKA hug Azrael. Huh? What are you doing? So yeah, who in chat wants me to hug the goat? Because... I'll do it! This might be a uh, uh, this might be like a 154 something, which is still not too bad considering. So please, also we're getting laser blast into oblivion now, but we're not dying. of an HP point. Yeah. So, yeah, sad boy is sad. And you know what we do with sad boys? We hug and cheer them up. So yes, we're going to hug Azrael. Azrael is a good boy and he needs all the hugs.
I mean, let's be honest, I've, I've only got the timer itself up, I don't have my split. And I think even if I was on PB pace, I would still hug the goat, so, yeah. Logic be damned, I'm hugging him. Let's do this. Bye. Yeah, this is the end of the run. We've basically just finished the Azrael fight. We've hugged Azrael and now we're just waking up and going back to normal. So we're entering the final cutscene of the run, and I'll try and call out when time is, because that's... <laughs> yeah, this would be like a mid-low 154, maybe. So time's coming up in about 15 seconds or so. And... Time. So, that is Undertale's Glitchless True Pacifist run. Um, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the run. Um, apologies for the tech slash stream issues, whether it was just teething issues with the system we're using, or whether it's on my end or what, I apologize. Um, but hopefully I was entertaining and insightful with this run, and I guess that's pretty much it. Um, uh, sorry? No, come on. Um, yeah, thank you very much. You got, um, a 153.57, if you were curious. Okay. Uh... Yep, no worries. Thanks for having me, and, um, I guess going on to the other side of the fence here, I'll see you guys again later when I start my hosting block in a little bit. By Tasselfoot. Um, I'm sure that'll be an, I'm sure that'll be an exciting run for everyone. Um, yeah, again, thanks for having me, and to speed things up a little bit, I'll cut stream and hop out. For